because I think Miss Moore made a mistake and she. Yeah, I don't understand why those kids didn't realize that uh, they were getting uh, screwed on their lunchtime. I would have thought they would have figured that well, part out. Not told that they only have fifteen minutes, but so. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, let's do this. Secret tutorial for magic. Magic. What do you need a tutorial for? You just turn it until it turns into until it's solved. There's not even. Yes, that's much. Uh, what's up, Ben? Uh, the opposite of down. Uh, so the question Ooh, is, roasted. so the question is, is North America really North or is it South America? Uh, well, that depends on your definition of North. You have to actually define your terms mm -hmm. first. So like who got to North decide is... that North America was on top and South America was on the bottom? And is that even really true? Well, we didn't really decide that. I mean, you think about Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. Well, no, we did. I mean, somebody literally said, okay, this is Upper Egypt, the part that where the water comes from. Right. So it was just a civilization that was like, well, the water's coming from Somebody here. got to make that decision. So but it's actually just water. Flowing. The difference is, is that in a universal aspect, somebody just made a decision that this is going to be up and this is going to be down. But no, there is no, you know. Well, North once, is not necessarily up. Okay, I you, agree. Oh, that's, what, that's kind of my point here. What you're is saying that, is you're orienting the Earth in, in a certain way. If you turned yeah. around, it would still be. If the same I flip thing. the globe upside down, you would tell me it's upside down. Right, and I would tell you that this is north and this is south. Yeah, but I'm saying that what's the who got to determine that it's upside down and who's not upside down? Well, I wouldn't tell you it's upside down necessarily. Yeah, so I if mean, I take the, the globe and I flip it over, everyone would say, "Hey, your globe is upside down." Oh, that's true. But I mean, that's not the that's just the average person. And. What's to say that we view the, it's called the ecliptic plane, the view the ecliptic plane with a plane like this and rather like this. You could, yeah. So therefore west would be up. But it's a circle, you can orient it down. any way. It, ellipse technically, but oh. it's a very, some of, the, some of the planetary motions are close to circles, but they're all ellipse. I built a wall. Are we ready to start? It looks like we got, yes, we are two minutes beyond time. So Ben has studiously showed up on time. Let's get something going. So what did I say we were going to do today? Review. Review. Mini review. Mini review. Mini review. Can you already see the? Uh... Yes. All right. Yeah, I'm riding it on a horse to a sunset. Absolutely, you can. All right. Are you allowed to right now? No. No, but I thought I said I was going to do a review, which means that class is. What are we talking? Why were we talking about horses? Or oh, one of my classes is beating the dead horse. I'm like what? I said I was. I made a point like forty six times, and I said I'm tired of beating this dead horse. And they're like, what? Like, you haven't heard that before. Mr. Grant used to say that, and then he'd be like, oh, I probably shouldn't say that. That's probably inappropriate. Why would it be? And then he used to tell us not to say like anything bad, and then, and then he'd, he'd go like, and cut. And say, why? Why would beating a dead horse be bad? I don't know. Like, he thought he'd get in trouble for saying it. I mean, I would, I mean, adult stuff, I would say if somebody had a sexual con, you know, some interpretation that might not be appropriate, but the like dead horse dead is horse. just a, uh, you know, an analogy. Yes, but I feel like analogy. that could be turned. No, well, not necessarily a metaphor. Right? Right. It's not really an analogy, but uh, um, more metaphorically speaking. But what if I'm driving through the countryside and I see this guy just be like beating a dead horse? Uh, and well, if the same goes, nothing's going to happen. Would that be considered? Not going to make the horse go faster. Would that be considered still animal abuse if the animal already did? Right. Well, do you ever watch the Kentucky Derby? They beat the crap out of those horses every race. Yeah. I mean, the jockeys have literally a whip. Squish, squish. Yeah. Oh, those poor horses. I, I always ask the people because we usually, at least at this school, have kids that are have horses, and one I'm like, "Is that mean? Is it cruel? Does it hurt the horse?" I don't know. Maybe we when think. I know when you're making them run in like a circle, you don't actually hit them. You just make the you sound next to them. behind them, so it scares them. Oh. But but even that, you might argue, is that's not it. That's Pavlovian scare tactics. <laughs> Pavlovian scare tactics. I'm making that word up. But... Do you understand what I mean by that? No. Pavlov. No. No. You haven't heard the story? Famous scientist. I don't know what his first name is. Last name Pavlov. He was, he was the guy that supposedly, I don't know if this is the actual experiment, but uh, 
um, he would ring a bell, give a dog a treat. Ring a bell, give a dog a treat. Ring a bell, give a dog a treat. And oh, eventually, yeah. he rang the bell, didn't give him a treat, and guess what happened to the dog? Crazy. It went slob, slobbery, right? It's like that episode of The Office. Is it? There's an My daughters watch The Office all the time, but I've never watched it. Jim keeps giving Dwight, every time his uh, AD gets an email, it makes a D. So <laughs> Jim gives him an Altoid every single time. So, like, he does that for a few days, and then, like, after a while, like, Dwight just sticks out his hand and he hears the bell. Yeah. And then Dwight, Jim's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> all right, exact, that's exactly what it is. All right, homework. How is that, how is that torture? That's, just that's mean, right? I would try to agree. But I guess funny. from a dog not, standpoint, not that point. That, it's funny when it's with humans involved. Dogs, not. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's torture too, because you're not actually hitting them. But they're, but they're no, used to it. every time they hear the crack that yeah. they get they get pain. So horses. Although are very stubborn. Um, I've been actually get them. So if horses are stubborn, what are mules? Stubborn squared? Yeah. I didn't know that's true, but they say that you know, stubborn as a mule. All right, questions on the homework. Uh, period two, boy, were they whining and complaining oh, about that table? I have 26. Oh, that table was kind of confusing. It took me a second to get it down. Well, it was table wasn't that hard. hard. It was just confusing to like match up the numbers. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. I told you that was the whole trick of this whole thing is you got to be able to match things. And you know what was further confusing is they called on one of the triangles instead of calling it ABC, they e called it EDF, yeah. right? Yeah, that was the one that confused. Yeah, and the like, formula deals with oh, nothing but A's. Oh yeah, well that happened that hard. That 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 took me a while, and I'm pretty sure I'm still didn't. I finally, I mean, I finally got period. So what happened with period two is that they. They tried a couple and they were like lazy and they're like, well, I can't figure this out because I kind of gave up. But we worked through a whole bunch of them in class and they finally got the realization it was okay, it's not that bad. I forget what numbers I gave you, but it was one through something. One through 26. One through 26. Any questions? No? Okay. Here we go. Uh, number one, B is four, C is four root two. Uh, number two, uh, A is uh, two thirds and C is two root two over three. Number three, B is square root of five, C is square root of 10. Uh, number four, A is three, B is three. Well, that was easy. Must have been the 45, 40. Oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, number five, A is three root two and B is three root two. Uh, C is square root of seven, square root of seven. Oh, I, wait, hold on. Wait, where's square root of seven? Is square root of seven. Number six, you are told that C. Uh, is a square root of 14, uh, 45, 45, 90, square root of 14. And we know that C is equal to, 14 times. on a normal, 45, 40 oh, is A root two. root 2. So if the square root of 14 is equal to A root 2, and I solve for A, so it's 14 root two, yeah. I'm going to divide both sides by square root of 2. So it's the square root of 14 over 2. Or no, square root of 28 over 2. No, you had it right the first time. Square root of 14 over square root of 2, and then what? And then, and then you multiply by. Yeah. Which is? Which is square root of 28 over 2. Is that what you said before? Yeah. All right. No, no. I, I was confused. I, was, I wasn't thinking two steps ahead. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, we got the square root of 28 over 2, but there's a 4 inside of there. Oh. So, that would be 2 root 7 over 2, 2 is canceled, square root of 7. All right. Uh, what was that? Well, I technically got the answer right. You just didn't reduce it. Uh, number seven, A is four root two, C is eight. Number eight, all right, here we come to the ugly ones, right? All the ones that are 30, 60, 90 ones. Uh, number eight, A is five root two over two, and B is also five root two over two. Yeah. Number nine, E is seven root three, F is 14. Wait. E, oh, dang, I did. Okay, well, well, I got E, E, seven, three. Yeah, E, what, instead of ABC, it's what, what, what? It's D. D is the short leg, E is the long leg, and F is the hypotenuse. Okay, I put A, B, D. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 10, uh, E is uh, root three over four, F is a half. Uh, 11, D is five, F is 10. Uh, 12, D is 2 root 3, and F is double that, so 4 root 3. 13, D is 5, E is 5 root 3. 
uh, 14, D is 13 over 2, and E is 13 root 3 over 2. I just put 7 over 5. For the first one, D? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 15, D is root 3, and F is double that, so 2 root 3. 16, uh, D is 3 root 3, uh, and E is 9. Yes? No? Mm -hmm. Uh, which brings us to 17 is 12 root 2, 18 is 16 root 2, 19 is 36, uh, 20 is 5 root 3. And then for the fun ones, 21, x is 4, y is 4 root 3 over 3, uh, 22, x is 3, y is 9, uh, 23, x is 6 root 2, y is 12. 24, x is 3 root 3, y is 9. Uh, 25, x is 8 root 2, y is 4 root 6. And 26, x is 10, y is 4 root 2. All right. Cool? Yep. All right. I have, if we need, and if you need more practice, I have more practice. I know my other class needs more practice. So what I did was I handed them not this, but I handed him a duplicate of this. Just I changed the problems around. Uh, this is this is the homework. Uh, ben, if you look at the uh, sheet that's attached, it's not what you visually see right now. It's one like this. So what I'm going to do, and you guys are going to do it in class well too, what you see in front of you, right, are, uh, all I did was change numbers around for the homework, right? Okay. Uh, okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at your homework, and you're going to look it over, and you're going to say, I would like to do a couple like this. And then instead of doing the homework ones, because I'll leave those fresh for you, we'll do ones on the, well, that are on the board right now, and that Ben can see. So, which ones do you think you're weakest on, McKinley, out of all the stuff that you see on that worksheet? I know. So, yeah. all of it? You want to go over all of it? I don't think I did. Yes, 48. Okay, so which ones do you think are the hardest ones? Which topic? I guess find the missing side of each combo, read the answer. So you're talking about one through eight, is it? I believe. Oh, okay. It's 13, 14. Okay. So these are not like what's on your sheet. Like the numbers are different. This is basically just the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to, oh, okay. I'm going to go up to, we'll do 13 and 14 on this sheet and then you'll know what to do on yours. All right. So here's 13. Ben, can you see 13 on my, on the uh, computer? Yeah. All right. So maybe slide um, it a bit more to the left. Ooh, kinda... I can't actually do that. Can't oh, wait. okay. Wait, wait, let me see if I can. That would explain what this green thing is. How about nope, that's not what I want to do. That's better, I guess. Cause then I was you just saying the the, the left side was a bit cut off. Okay, can you see the whole thing now? Yes. Okay. All right, so basically all this is asking you to do is to use the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, okay. Why are you not drawing? No, it's not drawing. I'm pressing the button, it's not drawing. I think I'm gonna have to change this. Can you see it now, Ben? Yeah. Okay, now let's see if I can draw. Yes, I can, okay. so. Uh, McKinley, I'm drawing this with my finger, so cut me slack. Uh, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Oh, yeah, uh, that's an A. I'm drawing with my finger on a mouse pad. All right. It looks like a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> a bathtub? Yeah, they kind of look like. From above? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know what I have to do. I have to do 10 squared plus. Not 10 squared. Square root 10. Yeah, so square root of 10 squared. Which is just which is just 10. Okay, so I'll go ahead and 10, keep talking. Plus x equals 25. No. Plus x squared. Look at the sides. Which oh, one is the? Plus, five, plus 25 equals x. 
equals yeah there you go well you had to until you get it right so therefore well it turns into 35 is equal to x squared in the last step so square root of 35 is there any perfect squares in square root of 35 so that is your answer so x is equal to where is the answer appear appear answer a pure answer. There it is. Square root of 35. Yeah, you got it. I did it right. You want to do another? Okay. No, I think I got it. Why? It's just the Pythagorean theorem. Oh. I didn't. Okay. Do you need review? <laughs> so you're saying on the entire sheet you got everything, McKinley? I think so. Well, I figured out. Uh, wait, wait. I guess the first few problems. Yeah, why don't we look at that? All right. Oh, no. So before we do that, McKinley, um, now this is tough. Ben, you're not gonna be able to see this and just listen to the explanation. This is tough because Sad. when we see this, this is that corollary one and two stuff, right? Can you see the right triangle and the, and the uh, altitude? Yeah. This is tough because when we look at, you open up your book of truth, it's gonna have like sides A, B, C, D, E, and H, right? I mean, something like that. None of that is here, it's just numbers. So what you need to do is just in the back of your mind, always keep this picture. I believe, I don't remember 100%, but it doesn't it go A, H, B, D, D, E, e C? Yeah, D, E, C. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And C is the whole thing. I think that's what it is. It doesn't really matter. matter. Okay. But what matters is that you're able to, no matter what, it, what I uh, apply for the labels, is that you can write the three things. And the three things are A, H, and B. Oh, wait, so X equals nine times 25 square root, right? Yes, you yes, did remember it. Yes, I So yes, in my picture, then A would be equal to the square root of uh, uh, D times C. It's 60 squared. No, you do 25 minus nine. No, 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 no let's just, just do this part first. Uh, H would be equal to You've got that problem, so I'm just saying in general, H, oh, H would be equal to uh, D times no, yeah, yeah, D times E. Yeah, square root of D times E, and uh, B would be equal to not right. H times uh, B. No, I don't remember. Uh, B. It's just the opposite of oh, this one. A times no, uh, E times no, D C times D. How about C times E, or any way you want? It's this piece times the whole piece. All right. Okay, and so on this one, you were correct. This one would be x is uh, uh not x is equal yeah no x is equal to the square root of you said nine times the whole thing twenty five what's the square root of nine three five so therefore fifteen that's the answer yeah uh, Ben are you okay on these ones the first eight or so yeah pretty much once again the the, the biggest difficulty is just taking the picture and applying it to you. so Allie. Wait, is this the same one? Well, it's pretty close. Wait, did you invite uh, Anna to this? I always invite Anna, and Anna's yeah, probably Anna's here. here. Anna's, Anna is here. Hello, I'm here. Hello. Anna, are you sure you're not a figment of my imagination? Are we back to this? Yes, are we Anna? back to this? You have a fix <laughs> on Anna. You want me to say it again? <laughs> uh, you're scaring McKinley now. All right, Anna, can you see yes. this on the board? Can you give uh -huh. me the setup? Um, possibly. <laughs> All right, tell me what to write. Um, so it would be that six or 25 minus 16, that'd be the smaller part. Yep, so okay, if we need it, if we need it, then that would be what what the heck kind of math am I doing? Uh, sixteen minus twenty five is nine. Okay, there, that's better. But what would x be equal to? I can't see the picture anymore. You can't? I think it left. It's on problem thirteen. All right. What do you see now? 
the same. It's still problem 13 and 14. What do you see now? Uh, problem one. Okay, there we go. So we were doing problem uh, that one. You see problem three now? Yeah. Okay, so X would be equal to? Um, six. Oh, it left again. I think I know why. It was when I was pressing the buttons, so I guess I shouldn't press the buttons. Stop touching the buttons. Okay, so X would be equal to? Um, seven. This would be that um, corollary one, corollary two thing. Oh. So. Um, nine or the square root of nine times 16. Perfect. Square root of nine is three. And the square root of 16 is four. So the answer is 12. Perfect. Um, which one? The first one. Oh. All right. So questions. I don't know if it's one through eight. I thought it was one through eight. Is it one? Uh, yeah, one through eight. Any questions on one through eight? You want to see one done? Anything like that? Ben and Anna as well. And your in your worksheet, it's the same thing. I mean, one through eight. It's just that yours are going to be slightly different problems, and that's what for homework is. I just didn't want to do the homework worksheet because I only printed off a couple, so I wanted to give you fresh new ones without me doing them for you and already seeing the answers. Uh, that is always the case in geometry. All right, let's go to fifteen through what. 15 through 20, is that right? Yeah, 15 through 20. Who can tell me what, how do you solve these? 15 through 20. Well, Well, how do you know if it's acute or obtuse? Which number? Okay, so if the sum of the square of the two smaller sides is then the third side, then it makes it. See what I mean? Okay, so it's the other way around. Okay, so this is where you're going to get in the problem is that you understand the basic idea. So look at me. So here's your right triangle, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fold it like this. So here's your C, right? So this one right here, which is opposite C, if this is smaller than a right angle, what happens to C? And if C is or the if uh, the angle, the typically normally the right angle is obtuse, then C gets. That's what you got to remember. And so, I, I mean, I don't know if you have to write it, but if a squared plus b squared is smaller. Than c squared, then that makes it obtuse. And you can really get yourself in a whole world of trouble if you don't truly think through that statement of, wait, which is bigger, which is smaller? The way I wrote it, and you can't read it that well because I'm writing my finger here, I'm saying that c squared is bigger than the other two sides squared and added together. And if it's acute, the only thing that changes is this symbol right here. Uh, ben and Anna, can you see that? Yeah. And that would be acute. Yeah, I can see it. And obviously, if it's equal, then it's a right triangle. And so that's all you have to do on that skill is just apply the Pythagorean theorem and see if it's equal. Uh, and then depending upon your frame of reference, if you want to either talk about the C or you want to talk about the A and the B, 
The way I just wrote it, if a, a squared plus b squared is smaller than c squared, it's obtuse. If a squared plus b squared is larger, then it's cute. For me, I like to think about it in terms of c squared. So I always say if c squared is bigger than the square of uh, the sum of a and b, then it's obtuse. And if c squared is smaller than the square of the sum of a and b, then it's acute. All right. So that's that concept. So that takes us all the way up to number 20 or so. And then 21 and through all the way to the end are our special right triangles. All right, I think we probably need to do some of these. So who are we on, Jack? Pick one. Um, Let's all look at number 28. Did you? Was it 45, 45, 90? All right. So, you're, uh, Anna, Ben, you're not going to see this. I'm simply going to take uh, the theorem and write out. I'm going to make a 30, 60, 90 and then write the sides of the standard generic 30, 60, 90. Well, this is the starting point. So, the side opposite 30 is called A. A. And it is the short side. The side opposite 60 is? B, B, which is going to be called not B, side, and it's going to be called A. Quantitatively, it's going to be called B. No, A root three. B. Yes, but <laughs> B doesn't get us anywhere for our calculation. We got to remember that it's A root three. And lastly, the hypotenuse is C or two A. Two A double A. All right, McKinley, look at that triangle. Okay, I'm not going to say this is always the best technique. It's the one that I like the most. There's only one number up there. What's the number? Two. So two is on what? The short leg, long leg, or the hypotenuse? The short leg. It's on the short leg. And according to us, our short leg is? A. So that means that two is equal to A. Which means C times A. Which means, therefore, that the hypotenuse, which in that case is? M. M is going to be equal to? Four. And that means that n is going to be equal to three. Uh, he did pick the easiest one, didn't he? You're welcome. <laughs> Does everything need to be complicated? Uh, this is when all my kids in period two were like, oh, oh. I said, yeah, because I finally got you to try one instead of going home and saying, this is too hard. I finished before you did. All right, Anna, pick one. Just any out of the whole paper? No, out of this uh, special right triangle ones. Um, 27. All right, 27 once again is our 30, 60, 90. So Anna, there's only one number up there. What is it? Six. So six, is that on the hypotenuse, short leg or long leg? Uh, long leg. And we know that the long leg is equal to, so six is equal to? Um, on, our, on our generic 30, 60, 90. B? Yeah, but I mean, that is true, but we need to write it in terms of the formula. And um, so A to the three square root? Yep, A root three. And so now we can solve for A. So if six is equal to A root three, we divide both sides by the square root of three. What is this, 27? Yeah. Uh, well, on mine. It's on mine, right. Uh, therefore, we need to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. So we get 6 root 3 over 3. And then that reduces to 2 root 3. Two root three. And then you're going to forget what the heck we just, what were we solving for? Why? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. We're solving for, oh my goodness, A is Y. We were solving for a true. We were solving for A. So we know that A is equal to 2 root 3. And Jack just said, but wait a minute, that is what Y is. So you got a twofer there. Not only is it A, but it's also Y, which only leaves X, and X is equal to 4 root 3. Double A. So therefore, it's double that, 4 root 3. Then Anna? Yeah. 
I'll be happy when you're in class so that I don't have to continually uh, act like you can see what's written on this board. Okay. Uh, now we'll go to what your question was, uh, Anna. Any questions on anything that's in front of you for your homework? Um, no. You guys? Ben? No, no questions. Okay. What's it going to be like when we have 14 kids in here next year? It's going to be weird. I mean, it's less than last year. It's not the same. Yeah, but it's, we're going to have a whole lot of people that last year were slowing us down, too, that aren't going to be there. We're going to have nothing but good kids that are really good at math in the class. But I'm not good at Wait, math. Wait, was I number two in school in this? If I wasn't one? No, 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 no. Not, the tenth grade, some tenth graders scored higher than you. What? You're in algebra two. Oh, algebra two tenth grade. Right. <laughs> I thought you meant the geometry night tenth grade. No. Oh, the geometry. Well, actually, I actually have to look that up. I don't know. I don't know. I would suspect there's two. There's two uh, tenth graders that are really good. If I had one of them, I didn't have that first year when we were in the church. One of them, I did have. And if he was, if he really wanted to say, hey, I'm ready for it, well, he could have, we could have skipped him up a year. Um, I mean, like he would have to do what those kids are doing this year, taking algebra one and geometry, but he didn't want to do that. So that's why it didn't happen with him. Why wouldn't he want to do that? I was well, that. are you being sarcastic? No, I wasn't. Okay. How do you not know when I'm sarcastic? I wanted to be an algebra. Uh, there are days when I'd like to be in Algebra 1, back when I took it. Did I ever tell you the story about... Uh, oh, uh, before I go off on a tangent here, uh, any last questions? Ben, Anna? No. Okay, I got None. nothing else for you. We only have uh, about five minutes left of class anyway. Okay. All right, if you run into any issues, just go ahead and uh, send me a chat or an email. Okay, sounds good. And remember, we're not going to see you on uh, Monday. So, Anna, you coming no, back next week? Yeah, I come back on Tuesday. All right, well, we'll see you on Tuesday, and Ben, we'll see you on Tuesday on the computer. Yeah, goodbye. Have a nice Yay. day. All right, have a great day and a great Bye. weekend. See you. Bye. Um.